Tokyo, my dear, dear friends, this is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. I certainly am happy because right now where I am in Tokyo, it is Saturday morning on February the 13th, and I understand that a few hours ago, the Criterion Collection made its announcement through its website regarding its planned releases for May 2021. So they usually announce it around the 15th of every month. And so they've gone ahead and announced it a few days earlier than expected, perhaps in keeping with the spirit of Valentine's Day. Love is in the air, who knows? But in any event, my friends, they have announced it a few days early. And so you can check out what it is they have announced for their May 2021 releases at the Criterion website. The link should be in the description box below. But let's see what it is they have in store for us. So the first title is planned for release May 4th, 2021, Trances, Ahmed El Manouni's work. Next, for May 11th, 2021, this is Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Amy Heckerling. Also on May 11th, 2021, Dorothy Arzner's work, Merrily We Go to Hell. Next, on May 18th, the film from Ho Xiaoxian, Flowers of Shanghai. And last but not least, May 25th, Edmund Goulding, Nightmare Alley. So let us now explore these works, at least in terms of our initial impressions. Again, when these titles arrive in the mail, hopefully in May or in June, then that'll afford us the opportunity to explore them with a bit more detail and with a bit more concrete analysis, perhaps. But for now, let us share our initial impressions of this May 2021 announcement. So the first one is Trances, Ahmed El Manouni's work. Uh, this is the documentary focusing on uh, Nas El Giwan uh, from Morocco. And uh, if you haven't seen this work, uh, I, you're in for a real treat because this is a really magnetic, highly charged, uh, musical-based work, a documentary, but it's focused uh, a lot in terms of the heart and soul and spirit, if you will, and popularity of this particular band and the music and the movement, etc. So uh, you're in for a real treat. Uh, it's possible that you have seen this film, of course, because it has been made available, uh, wonderfully so, through a number of avenues. For example, uh, from a few years past, there was this physical release set by Criterion, which is called Martin Scorsese's World Cinema Project Number no. One. And Ahmed El Manouni's work is actually included as part of this number no. one set. So it exists at spy number no. 689 already. So uh, this is one of, I understand, a number of possible avenues that uh, are afforded to, I think, uh, people in in terms of uh, the Blu-ray market, so or the physical media market, shall we say. So this is really exciting news because we have yet another example of a film that was previously included in, say, a World Cinema Project box, and now it has been made its own individual release and uh, very exciting. So spine number 689. We also saw, if you, if you recall, also from the same set, the announcement of, of Tuki Buki. And so we have Tuki Buki getting its individual release and now Trance is getting its individual release. This makes me so happy. This makes me so happy because uh, I am a great admirer of these sets because of the fact that the films are glorious. And I understand, too, that these sets are perhaps, uh, they are box sets, so they can be quite expensive, even under sale prices. So uh, perhaps that might be one of the reasons that people might be hesitant to uh, watch uh, this set or to purchase a set, which is totally understandable. And so with that 
perhaps presumption, I think it is a great opportunity to watch at least some of the films as they emerge individually. And so that makes me very happy. In other words, if an individual release of a film like Trances affords people more of an opportunity or a possibility to watch the film, I am over the moon. This is so great. And it also means that perhaps that could be an indication, I don't know, is this an indication of perhaps more films from these World Cinema Project sets being made individual releases as well? That would be great too because I am a great admirer of the box sets, don't get me wrong, and I, I uh, try to echo this as much as I can all the way up to the most recent set which is the number three set from last year. I adore that set very much. However, I think there is a lot to be said about having a film released in its own individual fashion. It's given a kind of treatment, a kind of attention, and also there is a price point that might make it more accessible for a wider audience, potentially. And these considerations, I think, make for a very positive reaction on my part when I hear the news about, say, an individual release made from a film otherwise included in what is otherwise a brilliant set. So uh, it's all good news from where I'm sitting. And so uh, we have also the uh, we have I think the the features it looks like according to the website the features look to be the same as what we saw in the earlier release but as I say I think the 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 point of appeal or the the main point uh, the drawing point if you will is the fact that we're going to get this film released on its own individually and that is cause for celebration immensely so uh, this is Ahmed El Manouni's work trances but then moving on, we have uh, May 11th, uh, Amy Heckerling's film, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This is also a, a big surprise. I was not expecting this. As I have said before, I don't usually have my, my pulse, my finger on the pulse, as it were, in terms of criterion-related rumors and the like. So I wasn't aware that this might have been, uh, been planned from, from a while back. I'm not sure. But in any event, here it is, and it's going to be arriving in May. Fast Times at Richmond High. Uh, I, I have seen this film since uh, a very young age, and so I feel like I've known this film. I admit I haven't seen it recently, but uh, when I was younger in particular, I did watch it quite frequently, and so this will be a great opportunity to uh, look back at this, especially now, I think, because I'm a little bit older, and so it'll be interesting to try to look at this film from this perspective of, as I say, being a little bit older than when I had seen it uh, more prominently back in the day many, many, many years ago. So, wow, this is really, really great, and uh, please take a look at the at the uh, website for the cover art. Very interesting, quite colorful uh, pop art type of design for the cover art for Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So that should be another uh, interesting uh, uh, point of conversation, I hope. And then we have, I don't own this on any physical media release, so I admit I don't have the direct knowledge as to the physical media release history. Uh, but from the looks of the of the special features, it, it looks to be uh, quite quite exciting indeed, including, among other things, a new conversation moderated by Olivia Wilde between Heckerling and uh, Cameron Crowe. So this, oh, that's very interesting indeed as well. So uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I know a lot of people who are really, really uh, big fans of this and big experts on this, much more expert than I can ever hope to be. Uh, and so I hope this is uh, a cause for uh, a, a lot of excitement among people who may be Criterion fans or who may be uh, film fans in general, but not necessarily Criterion. You know, this is a film that could potentially be one of those quote-unquote crossover uh, titles, a film that could appeal uh, on, a, on a level that might extend beyond, say, the Criterion collection crowd. So this could hopefully appeal to people who maybe are going to be uh, coming to the Criterion collection for the the first time, I hope. And if that's the case, the more the merrier. So this is going to be Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And then moving on to the Dorothy Arsner work, Merrily We Go to Hell. Now, this is a film that I have not seen. 
I am very intrigued because Dorothy Arzner, as we know, has already been uh, has already seen some uh, 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 some uh, uh, emergence uh, in the Criterion Collection physical media catalog with the film Dance Girl Dance, and I had the opportunity, the great pleasure and opportunity, to speak a little bit about that in a video I think several months back. And so at that occasion, Dorothy Arzner as well was spoken about in terms of her place in uh, this period of Hollywood filmmaking and the concerns that she has as a filmmaker, as well as how she dealt with certain, say, production or background uh, situations that were prevalent during the times that she was active as a filmmaker, as well as how that translated into a number of specific scenes in the film at the time, in particular Dance Girl Dance in the context of that film. So we have yet another film emerging in the Criterion Collection physical media catalog of the filmmaker Dorothy Arzner. Merrily we go to hell. So this is going to be a great learning experience for me. This is going to be something that, uh, as I say, as a continuation of my own learning journey on the works of Dorothy Arzner. And I admit that I am far, far, far from being an expert. Uh, but this is something that I'm very excited about. There apparently is going to be a documentary too, which is called Dorothy Arzner, Longing for Women from 1983. Uh, and so uh, if you are interested, uh, please join me uh, in this uh, discovery of this film when it arrives in May. Merrily we go to hell. And then we have the film from Ho Xiaoxian. And this is Flowers of Shanghai. And uh, this is from 1998. My goodness, um, what to say about this film? I am... I'm... I'm stunned. I'm so stunned for a number of reasons uh, due to the releases that have been announced thus far. But this is probably the one that's, in terms of the impact, is, uh, to, to borrow a phrase, it really took my breath away. I am... Uh, I am... Uh, uh, I'm... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm stuttering here, but uh, it's because I am very overwhelmingly surprised and overwhelmingly thrilled about this film and its emergence in the Criterion Collection and the emergence of Ho Xiaoxian's uh, directed works in the Criterion Collection physical media catalog. Of course, there was, uh, we did see, of course, uh, I mean, Ho Xiaoxian is connected or the Criterion Collection has shown certain aspects of Ho Xiaoxian, of course. But here we have the work directed by Ho Xiaoxian, Flowers of Shanghai. And my goodness, um, uh, this is a DVD that I have of Flowers of Shanghai. And I understand that, I'm not sure, but I understand that it's probably very difficult to get at the moment. And if that's the case, then I'm not sure what other ways are available. I'm sure there are uh, in terms of watching this film prior to the Criterion release. But in any case, we're looking at what appe uh, appears to be a new 4K digital transfer. So I have no information about the quality of this. So I'm going to have to check this out when it arrives. But we have a number of... of of uh, uh, supplements as well accompanying this, included in which are, for example, a new documentary called Beautiful Realism and also an introduction by Tony Raines and other, other bits of supplementary material. The film itself is a type of... It's, a, it's, a, it, it's one of those uh, films where you are absorbed into the work and it becomes this, this lyrical and poetic, beautiful type of, of glide of a journey. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's a very almost seductive way uh, that the film uh, brings you in. And I remember this too because I had the great fortune of watching this film upon a limited release when it was released in theaters many, 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 many years ago. And this was still when I was a student. 
in university, but we decided to go. It was in New York City, so we hopped on the train to go to New York City and we watched the film. And it was very absorbing. It was quite challenging and it was hypnotic. And there were many aspects upon initial watch that went right over my head. And so when I was able to get this again and watch it again and watch it again and try to understand it, uh, it became this this thing, this way into the world that is not just Flowers of Shanghai, but also Ho Xiao Shen. And uh, the rest, as I say, is history. Now, at this point in time, after seeing it a number of times, I still admit to not understanding all of its secrets. And so it becomes this ever-present or ever-engaging journey for me. Uh, and I, I think I've, I can't even... I can't even say that I've even scratched the surface of this really intricate and beautiful film, uh, but I do admire it immensely. And so Flowers of Shanghai, when it comes to the Criterion Collection, uh, let us examine it, explore it, and uh, we'll discuss it very much. But I am, once again, so, so happy about this. It's going to be released May 18th, 2021. It's not quite my birthday, but it's my birthday is around that time. And so this will be a very nice birthday present indeed. So the flowers of Shanghai. And then, uh, I mean, if that were all, that would be, that would be amazing. But still Criterion says, oh no, there's still one more left before the end of May. And what they have for us is Edmund Golding's film, Nightmare Alley. Wow. Okay, so Tyrone Powers' performance is, is you've got to see it to believe it. This film, you've got to see it to believe it. It's one of these, uh, these just uh, uncanny works, and I had no idea that it would be coming to the Criterion Collection, so this is another great surprise. I know it's been more or less available here and there, I think. I don't know. I don't think it's been... Maybe it's been on Blu-ray, but uh, I don't know any, of any Blu-ray releases directly. I don't certainly have them. But I know more or less of some DVD releases here and there. But still, still, it's not necessarily something that I think has been given a, a maybe a release of this of this kind from a label like the Criterion Collection. So if my understanding is correct, then this is a great opportunity uh, for, uh, for uh, this kind of, of 1940s thriller type of film, film noir, I think is the phrase that's described. It's, it's that, and it's, it's actually a lot of things at once. So, uh, and uh, it's uh, a quite daring and I think for anyone who knows the film, you know what I mean. And for anyone who hasn't seen the film, you are in for, wow, so Nightmare Alley. Talk about ending May with a bang. Well, uh, Criterion, you have done so. And this is going to be a very exciting way to end the month of May, that's for sure. And with a number of, of supplements, including a number of new supplements, especially from uh, the critic Imogen Sarah Smith, and I'm a big fan and admirer of her work, and she has this great way of expressing and explaining a lot of the historical details in very easy to follow, uh, uh, an easy to follow manner. So this is, well, wonderful stuff. So this is Nightmare Alley, and again, this is going to be for spine numbers 1078 to end out the month of May. So, my dear friends, that's what we have. So, I think to take a step back, if we look at these works, uh, the one that I will have to explore from, uh, from let's say, you know, well, the one I'm going to be exploring with a lot of, of uh, intensity will be Merrily We Go to Hell, the Dorothy Arzner film, because as I say, this will be my first time to watch it. So, I'm very excited for that. And then there is Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which I hope is going to be a great success. And hopefully it'll be fun for Criterion fans and also people who might be coming to Criterion for the first time. So that's going to be exciting. Night Morality 2 has that same type of vibe in terms of, of a type of potential crossover appeal. And also because of the really uncanny... Uh, exciting, explosive nature of the work itself. So this is going to be very exciting stuff indeed. Uh, and then we have the great news about the film Trances, 
And for anyone who's a lover of music, anyone who is a lover of great cinema, great documentary cinema, and anyone who's a, who's, uh, who admires and loves the World Cinema Project films and the, what it is they do in their philosophy, this is exciting, exciting news. I can't emphasize enough just how exciting this is. And if this paves the way for yet other films, Tuki Buki Before Now Trances, maybe other films from other sets, including this one, to have their own individual releases, as I say, the more the merrier. And then perhaps for me, on a personal note, the one that hits, hits home with perhaps the most uh, the, the, the most directness, perhaps, is Flowers of Shanghai. And I, 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 if this release, well, okay, let me take a step back and say, this release, when it arrives, I don't know what I'll do. Will I open it up immediately and watch it? I'm not sure. Or will I savor it? I'm, I'm not quite sure yet because uh, it's one of those things where it's almost like I, I want to save it uh, for as uh, as long as possible. It's that kind of vibe that I'm getting. And it's also the world of Ho Xiaoxian. And also it's this magnetic, powerful, seductive work that is uh, elliptical and uh, elusive. And that's one of the great joys and beauties about it. And so uh, this is going to open up a whole new world of conversation, I hope among many a film enthusiast and uh, hopefully for anyone who is coming at this for the first time, who, who's coming at the world of Ho Xiaoxian for the first time, ah, oh, my goodness, the, the possibilities are infinite. And so uh, this is the one that I'm, I think uh, I am most excited about uh, in a collection of titles that is just very exciting indeed. So, uh, Trances, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Merrily We Go to Hell, Flowers of Shanghai, and Nightmare Alley. Scheduled for release May 2021 from the Criterion Collection. Okay, my friends, so uh, that's it for me. But what about you? What do you think, my dear friends? Again, these are first impressions, so we'll have to wait and see when the actual title arrives. And who knows, maybe our impressions, our feelings might, our opinions might change when that happens. But for now, what do you think? I would very much love to hear what it is you have to say. So if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and we will go from there. But in the meantime, my friends, as always, as always, please continue to take very good care of yourselves and your family and friends and loved ones. This is the most important thing. And once you have taken care of that, my friends, please continue to watch a lot of great, great movies. And until then, my friends, thank you and cheers. <laughs>